Hi, this is Griffin Taylor from Vended, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Baby Kitty, you want to say something to camera? No. Shut up. Enjoy that shit, motherfuckers. Hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another video. Today it's another interview, this time with Griffin Taylor from the new band Vended. How are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, that's my that's my uh, that's my intro. That's that's the best <laughs> intro we've had so far, man. <laughs> Usually we get something like, "Hi, I'm Griffin from Vended," but this is no, way I'm better. Like, no, I'm just up in the gut. Uh, uh, baby <laughs> roof, baby roof. <laughs> so uh, it's great to it's great to be here. This is my first ever solo interview I've ever done, so this is gonna be great. That's so cool. What was the uh, other interview you did? Because I tried to look it up, but. Oh, the other interview was, I don't, honestly, I genuinely don't know my band. I don't, my band doesn't really tell me shit, which is <laughs> great because I don't care. They're just like, hey, we're going to be doing an interview with this one girl. And I just go, okay. And I let them handle that shit because I don't know how to set that type of shit up. <laughs> right, right. Well, so this did... is going to be the first one. You did pretty well setting this up, so. Yeah. So my uh, first question was, uh, when did you start singing and what inspired you to? Well, same like Simon, since Simon drummed when he was born, I was singing when I came out of the womb. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I was, because what my dad told me is that he would play his uh, acoustic guitar and I'd go and I'd pat on his drums and be like, like, just uh, uh, on on the guitar. And then like I would get, uh, but I would kind of like get the groove of it. And my dad was like, he's got it in him. I kind of oh, knew cool. what it was. And when I was uh, back when I used to go to like Greenwood and stuff like that here in Iowa, uh, it's an elementary school. I would uh, we would listen to shit like Metallica, Green Day, and stuff like that, and then I'd sing that at school, and everyone would be like, "Griffin, shut the fuck up!" And I'm like, <laughs> "Fuck you! It's my life." <laughs> Honestly, even in high school, I walk around the schools. I got my headphones on. I am screaming shit like King Eight One Zero, Slipknot, fucking Green Day. I'm just singing that shit, and everyone's like, "Can you shut the fuck up?" And I'm like, "Why don't you kiss my fucking ass?" <laughs> I just don't care and that's and because I was just the outcast in school even though not a lot of people liked me in school because um, uh, they just didn't understand why I was the way I was I just did what I I just did my own thing and everyone else was trying to fit into like uh, fit in into groups they're trying to join stuff me I just did what the fuck I want because yeah, I did not care I did not want to be there <laughs> I mean that's the way to go you know? Yeah. So, and if, and honestly, I don't, I'm actually glad that I sang because then it got my voice warmed up for when I joined ba my band with Cole. Right. Cole, Cole and I, uh, Cole Espeland, the guitar player for Vented, yeah. he was, me and him were the ones that originally created the band. Oh, cool. Okay. And, and when, right, when did that start? Oh, I'm really bad with dates, but I'm just going to say somewhere in 2016, maybe. Oh, I see. So it's been yeah. a long time coming, actually. Yeah. yeah, and even then, we were just like a cover band, and we just stayed in Cole's basement and got a few people together. Uh, and eventually, we didn't have a name. We just did cover songs like uh, we did... Uh, what, what's the fucking song from... Uh, Fuck, I'm, uh, what's it called? Uh, Rage Against the Machine, fucking. Oh, um. The famous song from Rage Against yeah, the Machine. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know the one you mean, but I. Yeah, it's fucking like, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. Yeah. I, I know, I know which one you mean, but I forget the title. I'm really, I'm really bad with names. So, yeah. What, yeah, what was too. your name, by the way? Roger. Roger, I only I only called you like uh, Slaughter Pepper. Like whenever I described them to my described you to my friends, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm with this, I'm gonna be doing an interview with this guy named Slaughter Pepper, and they're like, what's his name? Fuck if I know. <laughs> it's actually Slasher Pepper, even so. 
oh, slasher pepper. <laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah, you see, that's how fucked up I am. Yeah. I just can't remember shit because that's, yeah, that's where my ADHD kicks in. <laughs> I'm more like, um, like a visual person myself. Yeah, right. And um, what's it like working together with Simon, Cole, Connor, and Jeremiah? Well, the one thing I always say whenever I describe my band is that everyone is a dick. <laughs> we are all dicks. We get in, we get into fights a lot, and even and even then, it's just over like the smallest thing. But then we just squash it immediately, and that's what I'm really good at. Is that when I get when my anger management starts to kick in, which I try to keep it down. Uh, and I start to like my ADHD fucking like clashes with my anger management. And then we just clash, uh, because me and Simon have way different personalities and I will not talk shit about Simon. Simon is a great fucking dude. He's an amazing drummer. He's actually the person who got me into writing music. So I would not say shit about him, but, <laughs> but I will say He is very much like his father. And I mean that in the most loving way possible. <laughs> awesome. But he's my brother. And sometimes, you just, sometimes just like family, you just got to deal with it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. And everyone else is great. And in the band, what our band stands for is pain. So everything we do hurts. Because we push it just like Slipknot, just like Stone Sour, just like any other band in the world. We push it. We push that. We, we raise that bar the highest that we can go. I had a migraine last practice, and I just kept doing it. But then on one of our songs, which was like the heaviest song we had, uh, it's called Antibody. We, uh, uh, I was just like, I'm just going to go lay down and sing. And they're like, you do what you need. And I just laid down and sang. And honestly, I sang better. <laughs> I can't But, wait to see you on stage laying down and singing at the same time. Oh, no, 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 no. It's <laughs> that, that, I know the difference between uh, practice and stage. Because on stage, I will push it all the way through as much as I can. Oh, yeah. Because I am a bit of a masochist. And I, I embrace that masochist in me. Uh, to the point where I use it in band where... I let my band kick the shit out of me. Like, just like when my dad got set on, on fire and shit. Oh, right. Uh, JJ, my bassist, you know how big that fucker is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he fucking, I let him sweep my leg. He One time he put down his bass during practice. He grabbed me, like, like put me in a chokehold. And we're just like, just like, uh, just shuffling and shit. And then eventually stood up and went, whip, and just whipped me around and like, I weighed fuck all, so I just went over, landed on my back, and started laughing. <laughs> I don't care. I embrace the pain, and then I deal with it later. Yeah, well, and it, by it, deal with it, I mean go to bed, <laughs> <laughs> sleep it over. Oh no, my lower back, man. My, I, I swear to God, I'm a 17 year old, and I got the lower back of a 50 year old. <laughs> <laughs> That's relatable. That's relatable. Yeah. But fuck it, I push it. Yeah, it's worth it in the long run. Hopefully. Yeah. And how do you think the first Venda show went? I loved it. It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked for my body. Because uh, because of my, mas uh, my masochism, I try and push it as far as I can. And so I try, I, I do a lot of techniques to push it. So like what I did was I, uh, I took a, uh, I basically, I used to be a caffeine fiend. So I used to drink bangs. I don't give a shit if bangs supports Trump. I don't give two fucks. It tastes good. So I drink, I, I drink, I would drink bangs. I would drink monster. So before that show I had a bang and I bought three of those like five hour energy bangs. And I had those, uh, in on the same day. I slammed those all on the same day. I had one while going to the venue. I had one while we were getting ready. And I had one on stage. <laughs> well, it sure showed, man. Yeah. And I was fine. I had three of those big fucking monsters when doing that, uh, that cross-country choir thing. Oh, right, right. I drank all three of them and then fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. 
<laughs> yeah, man, I, I, I saw some of the some footage from the show online. I thought it was great, and I can't wait to hear some studio uh, recording. Oh, we oh, trust me. When that shit comes out, we're we are working hard. We've got a couple new songs that we've written and that we're putting on uh us something well i'm just gonna say something we're putting okay. it on something uh but it's gonna uh they're gonna be fucking great so far like what i've listened what i've what we've done so far it's gonna be fucking amazing and i'm really excited to show what we are yeah i'm really excited to hear it all man mm. and um when can we uh expect studio recordings and possibly an album from vendette Mm, I have no fucking idea. That's how in the dark I am. <laughs> this COVID shit really fucked us. Oh, in yeah. Ugh, I can't, like, I don't care if I have to wear masks. It's just the thing is, is that uh, I just, it really, like, pushed uh, all of our plans into the back. Like, we had to set a bunch of shit. But I will say that it is coming. It will be at some point maybe either this year or next year i can't i don't know but it we're working on it okay we've cool. got a few we've got a few ideas coming up right now we're doing a small thing and then we'll lead to an album awesome sounds very mm. promising mm. and um what are some of your favorite metal musicians or or bands i knew that this was coming <laughs> <laughs> of course i have that, that's yeah i should have prepared myself but honestly there's too many to there's honestly too many to list there's like yeah. king 810 uh amanda palmer uh ani defranco uh green day fucking fallout boy shit like that just so like i love so much music i've got an entire like an entire bookcase of fucking <laughs> like shit like i've got an entire truck on my phone on Spotify. Right. <laughs> i just listen i listen to everything i listen to rap i listen to pop i listen to country i listen to metal i listen to punk i listen to pop punk i listen to everything because in my mind it's all just music and yeah. the way that i see music like i know this is going to sound very like sympathetic in a way but I feel like every other artist in the world, whether bad or good, is better than me. Because they know a lot more shit than I do. I didn't want to be a musician when I, uh, when I was young. I wanted to, at first I wanted to be a florist, and then I wanted to be a video game designer. Uh, and now I was, and then Cole, and then I, uh, and then I just was in the dark during uh, middle school of when I wanted to listen to of what I wanted to listen to, uh, of what I wanted to do, I mean. And uh, then Cole came up to me. He was like, hey, do you want to do uh, the talent show together? And I was like, fuck yeah. And we did the talent show. We played Smells Like Teen Spirit. Uh, fucking love Nirvana, one of my favorite bands in the world. And uh, uh, then we just stuck together and we just tried to create a band. And I was very happy. My dad gave us much support. Awesome. That's really now, there's, great. So the only thing I can say is to answer that question is a lot. <laughs> I like everything. Right. Uh, there are some. There are some artists that I do dislike, like Kanye, Six Nine, shit like that. I don't like Kanye. I don't like Six Nine. And there are, are like there are a lot of bands that I don't like just because either I never got into them or they did shit that I didn't like, like like Five Finger Five Finger Dick Punch. <laughs> like I don't like Five Finger Dick Punch. They can suck a dick. <laughs> like, yeah, man. That, like, as much, as much as I did kind of like, uh, uh, what's it called? Righteous side, righteous side of hell. Oh, right. I know song. that one. Yeah. As much as I did kind of like that song, and I liked that they were trying to help uh, uh, military people, because a lot of, a lot of uh, people who get out of the military become homeless. As much as I do, like, props to that i just don't like them because they just do really shitty things yeah but about the, you listening to like any genre i mean you can't really limit yourself to just one genre no, no. you know oh no like in like in my music i like in one of my songs i literally uh in one of my 
as long as I take a, a, a quote from a musical, fucking Sweeney Todd. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Can't wait to yeah, hear that. Yeah, because uh, the song was like, had a theme of cannibalism and I was, and I was really happy. Like the, the song was like, uh, the lyric was like, um, fuck, I'm trying to think of the end. What a damn shame. Such nice, smooth skin. Bite it hard. Make it scar. Feel the need. Feel the greed. Whatever it takes to feed. Whatever it takes to feed. <laughs> For the price of meat. And I say that. For the awesome. price of meat. Yeah. That's so, so great. Like, I like I like a lot of musicals like fucking Sweet Todd, Rents, Rocky Horror, Hamilton. I like a bunch of that shit. New York. Oh, that's great. That's great. Oh. Again, you can't limit yourself to just one genre and basically in anything. Oh. Music, movies, anything. Yeah. And um about movies, what are some of your um well, I'm I'm sticking with one genre again, but that's just because of the channel. <laughs> yeah, oh, some, oh, fucking of course. <laughs> what are some of your favorite? You guessed it, horror movies. Woo! My favorite part. Uh <laughs> uh I got asked that I asked my friends the uh, same question, and I honestly had to think about that because at first I was gonna say uh, "Trick or Treat," not "Trick or Treat," the one with Ozzy Osbourne and what's his face, uh, like Sam. Uh, no, not no. The one where it's like uh, oh, it's like the... heavy metal bass. Yeah. Trick or treat, not trick or treat. I thought you were saying you meant trick or treat, but you mean trick or treat, the 80s one. Yeah, the 80s one, the one right. with uh, Ozzy Osbourne. Right. Uh, at first I was like, that was my favorite horror movie. And then I was, but then I was gonna say, I like Hereditary, but I haven't seen Hereditary yet, <laughs> which I'm very upset by, and it's not on Netflix, and I, can't, I don't know where to see it. And I'm really upset, because I would love to fucking watch uh, hereditary because what my dad because my dad watched it and a bunch of our friends watched it and they were like you have to fucking see it and I'm like can I watch it with you dad no I'm not <laughs> watching that fucking movie again that fucked me up <laughs> so so I had to go with uh, Witch oh, the right. one where it's the one where it's based uh, like like uh, uh, like back kind of like the Salem theme yeah like where like uh like this family gets kicked out of their uh their uh town or something because their religious beliefs were a bit too much of what the uh uh what the uh court uh recommended i guess and then they go out and uh, they they find land and just because that everything in that movie was practical everything was like they they had practical lighting they had practical dialogue like uh, like they had to like relearn that um that language right that really fucked with my head because i'm listening to this and i watched dead meat that's where i watched that movie. oh yeah yeah and it was fucking great but if i had to but other than which if i had to pick a good uh horror movie i'd have to say cabin in the woods because that, oh, one, right, that one's good because it because just because props to that fucking director because he like like he said in like the like the making of that movie he said that they had a rule if the, anything that they uh whatever they were gonna do if they could do it practically they were gonna do it practically props that's the way to, to go because fuck cgi yeah Even though cgi has helped a few films I do like what uh, the director of Cabin in the Woods did because that I enjoyed that movie very much, and I watched that when I was a kid, and I loved it. Yeah, CGI should be like a way to to they help should, the filmmakers. Yeah, they not, should limit it. Like yeah, yeah, not use it just for blood or for like like uh, like wounds or shit like that. They should use it for. Uh, they should just use it for. I don't know what they should use it for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, now that you think about it, you can do so many things practical. I was going to say, like, if you want to blow up a city. Well, yeah, but, but the thing is, is that, like, even then, uh, just uh, doing shit practically, it, it, it takes time 
and it takes uh, a lot of fucking money. So props to that fucking director because that shit looked amazing. Also, the fact that he used the Left for Dead uh, character, uh, some Left for Dead characters in uh, like the boxes. Oh scene right, because <laughs> I played that. I played that game when I was a kid. So I was just like, "There's the fucking witch. There's the fucking boomer. Oh my god!" Yeah, that was that scene is so awesome. There are so oh, many little god. like things. Yeah, there's so much to take in. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can just pause like one shot in, in that scene and already notice so many different things. Yeah, right? Yeah, and I, I also, um, do you know the thing? Like the 2011 one? Yes. They had like the 2011 prequel and they did everything practically. And the producer <laughs> was like, no, fuck that. They're not going to see this and put CGI no. over everything. Ugh. Ugh, I fucking hated that movie. The <laughs> second one can suck a fat fucking show. <laughs> as much as they, I do, I will, eat because I watch Dead Meat. I do uh, watch Dead Meat a lot. Uh, I watch it whenever I get stoned and shit, so yeah. but He's great. Yeah, but I, uh, uh, just the fact that, uh, the only thing that I will say you did okay with in that movie is that they... Uh, they did that like the 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 metal thing like they won't like the thing won't take metal parts like earrings oh, right. and villains and shit like that yeah that was cool but it yeah. sure didn't save the movie for me because that cgi is just oh. unacceptable the fact that they had to show what the monster looked like <sighs> it's not scary anymore <laughs> it's not scary because now we know what I the creature just, like, is yeah, because I like the original where it's like a who done it thing. Right. And I love like the fact that they no one knows who it is. Yeah, right? Only the director and I think Kurt Russell do, but they won't tell it ever. Kurt fucking Russell. He's a legend. <laughs> so um what do you Ooh. think hell looks like? A lot of gays. <laughs> Why is that? Because it's said in the Bible that uh, the devil might be gay. Oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah, genuinely, because the devil is everything sin. And apparently, homosexuality is a sin. So yes. I guess I'm fucking going to hell. <laughs> well, I'll see you there, I guess. Yeah. Welcome to hell. Would you like a meatball for 99 cents? <laughs> One of yeah, my that's... favorite jokes about hell is from this YouTuber named Nerd3. I recommend him. Great fucking YouTuber. Watched him when I was a very little kid. He was playing uh, Saints Row uh, Gat Out of Hell. And one of the jokes that he made was like, in hell, there are your favorite shows that are <laughs> that are put into different languages and then horribly translated back. In subtitles, <laughs> like it's so it's like you know what that would be in fucking hell. Yeah, just that for eternity. That would suck. Yeah. If I had, if I had a, uh, if I had a, uh, what's the word? Am I am I'm looking for? Like if I had a preference for what I. Uh, want hell to be like i would say i want it to be like has been hotel <laughs> where it's like like everything is like it's tactic there's wars going on you can get fucking fucked up because that would be a great fucking place for my band to play right yeah for sure Fuck yeah if me and my band go to hell we're fucking playing a concert there for the devil oh hell That's yeah it's gonna be fucking awesome I, I guess Lemmy would sit on the throne there. <laughs> Lemmy will be watching the show. <laughs> yeah, <sure>. right. <laughs> oh. And um, how do you deal? I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind being the court jester for uh, the devil. That shit would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh. I wouldn't mind either. No. Oh. So, um, how do you deal with uh, your haters? I embrace them. I don't care. Like, 
the way that I've lived my life is that I used to care so much when I was a kid. I used to care what everybody thought. And then as I got older, I started not giving a shit. <laughs> I started to lose, like, every... I started to lose all, like, faith for people. Like what I said on my post, like, when I was talking about, like, all those riots and shit, like, that have been happening with BLM. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I don't care who the fuck you are, just be nice to me. If you're not nice to me, we don't have to interact. I don't... I don't care. But when I... Uh, but on my Instagram, whenever I get DMs of people are just like, oh, you got everything you wanted. Oh, your dad fucking, uh, your dad fucking built you up. You fucking didn't have to work for shit. Bull fucking shit. I wrote every single song that we have. We wrote every single song that we have. And the only thing my dad and Sean gave us was just criticism. They just gave us their opinions and they helped us in little ways, like letting us practice at Sean's, at one of Sean's, uh, at, like just letting us practice at one of Sean's warehouses. Cause that's what a father would do. Right. If I was a dad, if, if I was a dad and my son or daughter was like, I want, uh, I'm doing a school play. Can you help me? Of course I'm going to fucking help them because that's what a good parent does. Yeah. That is what a good fucking parent does. You can say that I got everything I wanted. Bull fucking shit. Look at my hands. I got scars all over them. Right. But like you can say all of that. But at that point, I don't care about what I have. It's who I have. Oh, that's yeah. what that's all I care about. I don't give a shit about my Xbox. I don't give a shit about my TV. I don't give a shit about this headband or this fucking or this fucking band-aid. I don't care. I lost my will to care because at this point, we're already close to a fucking nuclear apocalypse that at this point, that's why I started smoking weed because at this point, I could not care. Right. I lost my will to care. And by the way, before y'all, before y'all watching this, getting on me about smoking weed, I already told my dad and that was, and I waited a little bit just because, you know, I'm a kid. That's what I do. But I waited a little bit, and then I eventually told my dad because, honestly, because me and my mom were getting into a fight, and I just didn't know how to feel about it. Because she was arguing me, with me about smoking weed and how she uh, didn't want me, and I love my mom. She didn't want me to, like, end up, like, she didn't want me to become a junkie or like to lo just to lose everything in my life. And that's not what my intentions were. The reason why I started smoking weed was literally because COVID happened and I was staying up at night just going like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, <laughs> I'm gonna die. And at that point I was just like, I already had to deal with this depression shit in school. I need something to fall back for just a little bit. And now that I have a job, I have been working my ass off. 24 7 everything i do i do with a hundred percent yeah and 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 you're working your dad yeah. isn't helping anything with that right yeah and they just didn't want me to get into like like because most people when they smoke weed they eventually want to try harder things and that's not my that's not what i want i know what heroin does i know what cocaine does because i've because i've not experienced it but i've seen it happen in my life right. with my loved ones and that's and i took that and i pocketed that and i kept that as a memento of that's not something that i want to happen to me and besides everybody like all the cool like fucking musicians are stoners <laughs> oh for sure yeah right when you think about like, it because the reason why i like weed is because marijuana is such like the culture is so friendlier than all that other shit. Oh, yeah. And besides, yeah. even when I'm stoned during band practice, I work 24-7. I work my ass off. I put in 100% whether I'm stoned or sober because I do not care. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Is, I, and I definitely think to go back to like your criticism on uh, or well, your um, your thoughts on, on like hate comments and all that negative stuff. Oh, oh, I'm the worst with hate comments because at this point they have, because like I keep saying, I lost my will to care. Right. So 
I have been called, I've been called it all. I've been called a daddy's boy. I've been called faggot. I've even been called white Jesus by some kid in school <laughs> because I just had long hair. And I was just like, the fuck did you just call me? I'm not even offended. I'm honored. You think I'm Jesus? Right. <laughs> if you think I'm Jesus, I'm sorry, Christians. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm Jesus. You're, you're Jesus, but you also need to go to hell because of your sexual preference. Like, they're not making any I sense. Actually, I actually asked the question, what does Jesus's cum taste like? Is it holy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but but like in the time, this time you could spend like caring about these negative oh, no. thoughts. Because I'm the worst with like anybody who talks shit to me on my DMs. I just poke the bear trying to get them more and oh, more yeah. angry. Only one time I was just fed up with this person because they were just telling. It was that person who was telling me ra like racist shit. Oh, right. Like Trump 2020, fuck N words. And I'm just like shut the fuck up why are you why are you talking to me i'm not associated with your kind fuck off right just <laughs> like, suck. go away like i don't care whatever whatever you think about people i don't care just don't associate it with me because at this right. point you can go fuck yourself why was he even dming that to you i don't know <laughs> probably just well honestly i know why he did that he was probably just a troll he right. was just trying to troll me and get me like wired up, but I just didn't care. And that's the only reason why I got mad was because he kept messaging me that shit and I just didn't care. So I blocked him and just told him to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I love I love what you said in one video where you were like, um, when I was if born. If you like me, cool. Oh yeah, that one. <laughs> if you don't like me, cool. If you want to kill me, make it quick. <laughs> yeah that one but there was also another one um where you said like when i was born and saw a black person for the first time i was like it's a person it was, oh no i didn't honestly actually i can't really say shit because when i was a kid my sister told me i don't remember this at all and I'm, I'm very embarrassed by it when i was a kid i saw these uh we went to like the swimming pool and i saw these two like uh Spanish kids talking to each other in their native language and I thought that they were just making up a language when I was a kid because when I was a kid when I'm a kid when you're fucking a toddler you don't know that there's different languages no, so I was so I just went over there and started speaking gibberish and my sister went oh shit <laughs> sorry it's my iPad my sister went and grabbed my wrist and was like get the fuck over here I didn't know what the, what the problem was. And then I got older and I'm like, ooh. Oh, crap. Maybe <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> no, that, those, those kids, don't, they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, right. And Man. besides, I'm not like that anymore. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I wonder where they are now. <laughs> no, no, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so where do you think and or hope you and the band will be in 10 years i hope that we will be just having fun just doing what we do best i don't the only thing i want to do is just play shows and have fun with music because i don't care i don't i don't care what i don't care about the money as uh, the money would be nice but i don't care about the money i don't care about the fame i don't even care about like i don't even care about like my body when i do my music i'm there to do what i do best which is sing my ass off and have as much fun as i can and bring out that beast inside of me because my anger management can be a fucking bitch <laughs> well That's this is why a good I way that what this is a good way to get rid of that anger. No, no, I'm very, I'm very much a chill guy. It's just when that shit starts getting on my nerves is when I will like act out, but I will not be physical. I just shout and then I just rub right. the ears, just like. Uh. That's relatable. Yeah. I used to, I used to get so pissed off at school. I used to get so depressed that I would punch the brick walls and get like, 
like scars on my knuckles. I would run my hands on the brick walls and just like scrape them and just get road burns on them to the point where I now have scars on my knuckles. And I keep them as a memento of what I, of what pain a, ch a child goes through in school. Oh, because yeah. just because what people, what some people don't understand is that just because my dad is famous doesn't mean that I don't go through the same shit that any other like 17 or eight or 16 year old goes through. I still got bullied and I still got fucking, I, I got my ass beat when I was a kid. And uh, there, I was such a scrawny and nerdy kid that I couldn't defend myself. And then I started to get more and more pissed off to the point where now, if you come at me, I'm gonna fuck you up. Whether I lose or win, I will, I will show you that I'm not that, that shit. I'm not with that bullshit. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, everything you, know, everything you go through changes you and hopefully for the better. And in your case, definitely for the better. Yeah, right. So uh, is there anything you would like to add to the interview? Uh, I'll have to think about that, but uh, I just say check out Kid Bookie, check out fucking OTEP, check out all those fucking bands. Go support your local uh, musician because – they need as much love as anyone else in the world because a lot of the times they don't get to the, they don't, to fuck, to talk to those, uh, to get back at those people saying that I didn't, uh, that I, uh, that I didn't earn any of the shit that I did, that, that, like, I didn't, uh, start from the bottom. How about this? Go, anyone in, everyone in the world, go support your local musician because, they need as much love as any other person in the world because they, they didn't start where I started. They need That's, as much love as anyone else because they know what, because a lot of the times they know uh, what it's like to just be uh, stuck with debt and be stuck with money problems. I'm stuck with money problems. My dad doesn't pay, my dad pays me, well, my dad does put money on my card, but I use that for food. Right. I don't use, I don't, I, I, there have been times where I used it to buy, to just like indulge myself in some shit. But even then I don't, I, 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 I even, I even know I work my ass off as much as anyone else. Yeah. Which is good because you need to, you need to, you know, learn your own way in life instead of uh, like getting everything and definitely yeah. looks like you're, you're just working your ass off as, as anyone else, as any other yeah. 17 year old. I mean, my dad and my mom, they split, and my mom lives in the city, like, near Des Moines, and my mom, like, near Des Moines City, and my dad lives all the way out in fucking Vegas, in a big fucking mansion. Well, not a mansion, just a big fucking house. Right. But even then, I just don't care about the wealth, I don't care about the fame, I'm just here to live my life to the fullest, until I drop dead, and even then, I'm going out with a big fuck you, world. <laughs> That's a good way to go. Anything else? Welcome to Vendetta, motherfucker. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. No problem, dude. Shout out to uh, everyone. Fucking go subscribe and like follow uh, Slasher Pepper because he's a fucking great dude. Waited this long. Hell no longer awaits.